Russell Brand has been doing a great job recently as well as Joe Rogan, and this video involves both of them. Joe Rogan reacts to Mark Zuckerberg going on his podcast and talking about the Hunter Biden censorship, and Russell Brand also addresses that same thing. And Joe Rogan's reaction, as well as Russell Brand's reaction, were very, very interesting, and a lot of very, very interesting data and information came out of this whole thing. Let's check this out here from Russell Brand. Watching Joe Rogan's reaction to Mark Zuckerberg admitting to the Hunter Biden censorship, especially topical with what happened recently with the whole Hunter Biden situation. Let's get into this video here from Russell Brand talking about Joe Rogan. I'm very sympathetic to the idea that Hunter Biden's an addict in recovery. All addicts in recovery should have the opportunity for redemption and the opportunity to change. But is this really about that? Or is this about what he's not being convicted of or even charged with? Because those charges would lead us all the way to the White House and into a fair analysis of the degree of corruption within those institutions. Let's have a look at the legacy media reporting first of all. Mr. Biden is now a convicted felon. It took a Delaware jury less than three hours to find the president's son guilty, guilty, guilty on all three felony gun charges, deciding he violated laws meant to prevent those who use and are addicted to illegal drugs from owning firearms. Multiple jurors spoke to CNN in the moments after they left court, including juror number 10, who told CNN that the jury had been evenly split last night when they wrapped for the day with six guilty, six not guilty. But this morning, Jurors went count by count and unanimously decided Hunter Biden was, in fact, guilty on all three counts. Hunter Biden responded to the verdict in a written statement saying, quote, I am more grateful today for the love and support I experienced this last week from his wife, Melissa, my family, my friends and my community that I am disappointed by the outcome. Recovery is possible by the grace of God. And I am blessed to experience that gift one day at a time. Unquote. Hunter Biden now faces theoretically up to 25 years in prison. He so the rhetoric around and he won't spend a day obviously you know none of these powerful people will, will ever spend a day in jail not even saying that he he should on these counts but with all the evidence that we have um there should probably be, be more charges that he's found guilty of but that's kind of for a different video this is more centered around the censorship and how scary this stuff is because it is very very scary what's happening with the censorship and Thankfully, and I'm not a huge like Elon Musk stan or anything, but there's no doubt about it. There's been less censorship on X than there was on the previous regime of Twitter. There's no doubt about it. So thankfully, we have platforms like that. We have platforms like Rumble and these other platforms that don't have these mass amounts of censorship. And, and all we can do is hope that they stay like that. But what happens in mainstream media and, and the way that the DOJ has been weaponized against Trump and the opposite has been happening with Hunter Biden it's scary, dude. It's, it's very scary because people are falsely accused of things all the time that don't get these mass amounts of coverage, that don't have actor money whenever actors are accused of things, that don't have the audience to be able to crowdfund for legal fees. And they just get convicted and, and they're just in jail. They're just locked up or they lose their house or their cars or whatever. You know, the DOJ is a, it, it, it's, it's very, it's very corrupt right now. We'll just say that. And it, these these stories are suppressed on social media. So let's get into Russell Brand talking about the censorship that was discussed on Joe Rogan between Joe Rogan and, and Mark Zuckerberg here. Recovery is encouraging to hear, but over here in the Awaken Wonder chat, a lot of people are talking about human trafficking. A lot of you are talking about election interference. A lot of you are talking about the censorship that took place in 2020. Censoring this story at a time where people were making up their mind as to whether or not they could trust Joe Biden, whether or not Joe Biden was indeed, as he was claiming at the time, an adult that was going to reboot American democracy, that was going to reset what were regarded and reported to be the travesties of the Trump administration. If we now are to assume, as this case seems to verify, that that laptop was of course always if you enjoy content like this then make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell it really does help me out a ton let's get back to the video legitimately hunter biden that the information on that laptop always was authentic then suppressing the laptop story which happened at large was if not just plain corruption potentially election interference let's have a look at this when mark zuckerberg was on Joe Rogan, he talked about the degree to which they censored the laptop story. Here are the things we have to consider. How important 
was the laptop story, Hunter Biden's exploitation of his relationship with his father, the fact that it seems to indicate that Joe Biden had business interests and potential kickbacks that are pretty peculiar, pretty off book, pretty dark. How significant is that? How easy does it make it to believe that he's a authentic and reliable, safe pair of hands president, particularly when you see him now, when you see him in the state of decline that he's in? And how important was it that- It's, it, it's mind blowing to me that people like, there's a ton of people on the left that still think that Joe Biden will be a better president than Donald Trump. And uh, I mean, guys, I, are you that dumb? Like, are you that stupid? Even if you don't like the policies that Trump has, at least he has policies. At least he has the brain capacity to come up with these things. Joe Biden, every single time he makes a public appearance, has embarrasses himself. You know, and, and it's things like that that makes me just completely lose faith in... in the United States, dude, because there's still a ton of people out there who genuinely think that Joe Biden should be reelected. The guy wanders off every time he doesn't have someone strapped to his arm to guide him where he needs to go. He wanders off or he poos on himself and has to get rushed to the bathroom. Like this is this is not me being hyperbolic. This is actually happening consistently. And a lot of people in this country think, oh, yeah, Joe Biden's doing fine. He's doing a great job, you know. I think um, I saw Destiny talking about it, and he was saying, I like um, the way that Joe Biden is handling crime and, and knocking down the crime rates. I like the the way that he is, he's a lot more firm on, on you know, the, the foreign wars and stuff like that. He thinks that Trump was too nice to, you know, the North Korea leader, he, you know, Putin, the China leader. Like, he thinks that Trump was just going around shaking everyone's hand and being too nice. And Joe Biden's a lot more firm. And <laughs> I mean, who cares about that part? Let's look at the results of the thing. The results is under Joe Biden, wars are breaking out everywhere. Under Trump, there was not much war. That's all we really need to, to, to say, you know? Really all we need to say is one of them is a dementia patient who can't keep pooing without, who, who can't stop pooing his pants in front of large groups of people in a presidential setting can't read off a teleprompter without reading the wrong words or getting lost. Doesn't know how to walk off a stage without being guided off. Like, come on, dude. Like, like, it has a son, like, exactly what we're going over now. Like, this, there's no competition here. I shouldn't even have to list off these things. It's, it's, there's no competition. But that story was censored. And then we'll look at some of the charges that are not included. The fact that this might be regarded more as a smokescreen than a victory for justice. The distribution on Facebook was decreased, but people were still allowed to share it. So you could still share it, you could still consume it. So when um, you say the distribution is decreased, in, it, it got shared. It, how does that work? It basically the ranking in newsfeed was a little bit less. So fewer people saw it than would have otherwise. So it definitely by what percentage? I, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's 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 meaningful. But I mean, but basically, a um, a lot of people were still able to share it. We got a lot of complaints that that was the case. Um, you know, obviously, this is a hyper political issue. So depending on what side of the political spectrum, you either think we didn't censor it enough or censored it way too much. But right. but we weren't sort of as black and white about it as, as Twitter. We just kind of thought, hey, look, if, if the FBI, which you know, I still view as a legitimate institution in this country, it's a like very professional law enforcement. They come to us and tell us that we need to be on guard about something Then I want to take that seriously. Did they specifically say you need to be on guard about that story? I, I no, I, I don't remember if it was that specifically, but it was it basically fit the pattern. The sense I get from looking at this is that the hunt of Biden matter, the laptop, the various charges, the charges that have been pursued to conviction and the charges that have been dropped and ignored as part of a sweetheart deal or a good way of diagnosing the state of the institutions that make up an apparent democracy. It's a clear indication that that we're living in times of widespread censorship and widespread corruption. The idea that this is put before us as an as a uh, an example of how we can rely on the judiciary is pretty ridiculous. Let's have a look at this post from. You also, I mean, you got to be somewhat. You got to understand where Zuckerberg's coming from somewhat, because you build something from the ground up, like Facebook. You have this company that's generating you billions and billions of dollars every year. You don't want to lose it because you get on the FBI's bad side. I, I understand. Um, you know, I, I can understand that. 
But also at the same time, if you don't censor it, you're still going to hear from the right that the story is being censored. That's still going to be a narrative. And you're also going to hear from the left that you need to censor it. If you do censor it, you're going to hear the same thing from both sides. You're going to, you know, the left is going to think it's not censored enough. The right's going to think it's too censored, no matter what you do. So my thing is like, why censor it? Just if you care about free speech, you're going to hear the flack either way. Just don't censor it. The fact that he's saying that they did it, they censored it a little bit, but not all the way as if that's trying, that, that that's supposed to redeem him or redeem the way that Meta Facebook acted during the whole situation. That's not, that's not helping your case. You know, if you're going to hear the flack either way, you might as well do the right thing instead of the wrong thing. You know what I mean? So let me know in the comments what you think about this whole Hunter Biden stuff. What do you think of Russell Brand's reaction? I thought it was pretty spot on. Joe Rogan's reaction to the whole thing, obviously pretty, pretty, pretty good as well. Let me know what you're thinking about this whole situation. It's getting messy out there. It's getting scary out there. Let me know how you're feeling about this whole Russell Brand and Joe Rogan situation.